In this video I'm going to be talking once again about triads and it's going to be another one of these triad boot camp style videos and regular viewers will know that I love me a good triad and they're so useful in so many ways. I think they're one of the most important ways that you can understand the guitar, understand the logic of the fretboard and the way this thing works and on a more practical level they're great for coming up with rhythm guitar parts and fills and they're also great for lead guitar as well and personally speaking triads are really the backbone of the way that I approach soloing and I'm not always going to be soloing with triads but they give me a kind of framework and they mean that I'm always going to be hitting the right notes those all important chord tones. Now I've done a few previous triad videos where I've gone over the basics so we've had the different string sets and then our major and minor triad shapes along the neck in their different inversions. So I'm going to be assuming that you're fairly familiar with all of that stuff already. In this video I wanted to take things a bit further, take things to the next level as it were, and we're going to be applying those triad shapes to the most common chords in music. So the one, four, five chords, and we're going to be mixing all of these different forms. And it's such an important, such a worthwhile thing to be working on, I think, no matter what style of music you play. So let's get started. I want to start with just a very brief recap of Triad Basics and if any of this stuff is totally unfamiliar to you then I suggest checking out one of my earlier Triad videos. I'll put a link to that on the screen. But basically what we're dealing with here is three note chords. Usually we're going to be playing these shapes on adjacent strings, so sets of three strings. That is unless you're getting into spread triads or open voicings which is something I'm not going to be getting into in this video they're more of a specialized thing and to be honest not something that I use that much. So let's start with the top string set. I mean when I talk about string sets I'm talking about sets of three strings so we've actually got four possible string sets of adjacent sets of three strings. So we've got strings one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five, four, five and six. But starting on the top three strings a C major triad would look like this. So in terms of intervals, we've got a root note, we've got a major third, a perfect fifth. In terms of the notes, we've got a C, E and a G. So that's our C triad shape. And then what we can do is we can find two more C triad shapes higher up the neck and we can play them in what are known as inversions. So we're just changing the order of the notes. So we've got E, G, C, that's what's known as a first inversion C major triad and then the second inversion is G, C and E. So those are our three triad shapes on the top string set. And then we can just find the same shapes on the other string sets. So we can go over onto strings two, three, four. We've got a second inversion there, root position, first inversion, and then so on down the string sets. So those are the shapes that I want you to be familiar with. So all of the string sets, all the different inversions, I just demonstrated those to you in the key of C, but I think you want to be able to do that in all the possible keys. So if you've never done that before, there's actually quite a lot of work just there learning those basic shapes. So once you've got those basic shapes under your fingers, this is where the magic starts to happen. And we're going to be combining some of these forms over a 1-4-5 chord progression, 1-4-5 being the most common chords in music. I think obviously they're the core of certain styles of music like the blues and jazz, but really you just find them everywhere. So that that's the best starting point, I think, when it comes to changing between triads. And I'm going to do this in the key of G for no particular reason. It just fits nicely on the fretboard. Eventually you want to do this in all keys, but let's start with a G triad shape here. So I'm going to do this to start with on string set two, three and four. Here's our root position G major triad. And one, four, five chords in the key of G are going to be G, C and D. And of course, one option might just be to go one, four and five like that. So just taking the same voicing up the fretboard. Nothing wrong with that. There might be situations where that will be what you want to do but it might be better in most situations, I would say, to change to the nearest available triad shape using some of these other inversions. And that way you get a smoother sound 
and it's also nice and convenient. These shapes are right under your fingers without any horizontal movement. So if you're going to do that, we've got start with the same uh, root position G major shape. Our closest available C triad shape, the four chord, is going to be here. So this is the fifth fret on all of those strings. This is a second inversion shape. So we've got the one and the four. And notice how smooth that changes. Uh, we've got one of the notes is staying the same. And this note here, the B, is just moving up by one fret. And the D is going up by two frets. So it's a very smooth sound. The, the voice leading is good, as they say. If you think about the individual notes in the triad as being a voice, they're just moving a very small distance, so either not moving at all or moving a semitone or a tone, which makes for a nice smooth sound. So the five chord we could play here. So we've got fret four, two, and three. This is a first inversion shape. And again, a very smooth sound. So we've got one, four, five, and back to one again. And you want to try and be aware of the notes in each of these shapes as well. So G, B, D, and then in a C triad you've got C, E, G, and then in a D triad you've got D, F sharp and A. So try and be aware of that stuff, in particular the root notes. So we've got our root note here on the fourth string for the one chord. There's the root note for the four chord. And the root note is on the second string for the five chord. So those root notes are important for just being able to find these shapes quickly I think and also be aware of how those other voices are moving so you can notice things like the third of the one is just moving up to become the root of the four chord or the third of the five chord is moving up one fret to become the root of the one chord all of that stuff is interesting and then you can do the same thing in two other places on this string set so we can take this G triad as our starting point, this first inversion shape, that's going to be our one chord. The closest available four chord shape is going to be this. And then the five chord we can play here. So we've got another set of three shapes that work very smoothly. And incidentally, you have, of course, got the option of using the same shape for the four and five chords. So That's slightly less smooth, so here I'm preferring to use three different shapes for the one, four, five. So we've got first inversion here, here's a root position shape, and here's a second inversion shape. And then we can do that one more time up here. So starting with second inversion G major shape, one, and then four, five, and then back to one again. And you want to be really familiar and comfortable with this stuff. Um, just want to have these shapes automatically under your fingers in these different positions. Uh, I almost think of this as just one chord shape. Uh, obviously there are three separate shapes here, but it's really just one thing. And I want to have that one, four, five right under my fingers automatically. And it might well take quite a bit of work to get to that kind of stage and you're going to want to make this a part of your practice routine and do drills where you're working on these one, four, five shapes. So what I'd suggest to start with is just going through one, four, five, one, and just repeating that exercise to get the muscle memory working and then you can do it in the other positions as well. If you want to add a bit of pressure to find those shapes quickly, you might like to get the metronome involved. So just get the metronome going at a comfortable tempo. This is on 63 BPM. Maybe give yourself a couple of beats to find those shapes. So one, four, five, back to one. And then the same thing in the other positions. comfortable with that you could try playing those triads on every beat so and then of course you're going to want to do this 
on the other string sets and in other keys. So I think it's best if you try and work this stuff out for yourself. It's a really good mental exercise to try and do this. So I'm not going to go into this in too much detail in this video. I'll take you through the shapes quickly. I will write all of this stuff out and put it on my Patreon page. I'll tab it out and do some fretboard diagrams. But just briefly, if we do this in the key of G again, on the top string set we would have G, C, D, back to G, and then in the next position, and and we can do the same thing on the lower string sets, so strings 3, 4 and 5. to the lowest string set, the same thing. And you've got the option sometimes of using some open strings as well. I'm choosing not to do that in this video, but for some of those shapes you could get some open strings in there as well. And then of course doing it in all 12 keys and already we've got a ton of work there so do take your time with it as i say this is a long-term thing to be working on if you just have some triad practice in your practice routine you can just gradually chip away at this stuff and gradually deepen your familiarity with these materials so the next step i would suggest is going to be trying to use this stuff in a real musical situation and that's half the challenge i think you want to obviously learn this stuff and understand it, understand the theory, get all of these shapes under your fingers. But then you want to bridge the gap between knowing this stuff in theory and actually being able to use it confidently in a real musical situation. So what I've got here is a backing track, key of G, and the bass guitar is just outlining those one, four, five changes. And I'm going to play those one, four, five triad drills in each of the possible locations on the fretboard and I'm going to try and make it musical. Uh, I'm not going to promise it's going to be the most amazing music. It's still an exercise, but I hope it gives you some idea of how you might deploy this stuff and actually use it in a real situation. And I'm going to approach this in a couple of different ways. My first playthrough, I'm going to approach this as more of a rhythm guitar player. So I'm going to play these triad shapes as chords. I want to start simply, but then maybe introduce a little bit more rhythm. I might start arpeggiating some of these shapes as well so we can see how that sounds. And then next playthrough, I will approach it more as a lead guitar player. So I'm gonna be breaking the triads up into individual notes, playing a bit more melodically, playing a bit more like a guitar solo. And again, it's not gonna be the most amazing guitar solo. I just wanna keep this as a purely triads based exercise. I think in an actual guitar solo, I'd probably throw some other stuff into the mix as well. I wouldn't just limit myself to triads. I might add in some other notes. I actually did a video recently where I added in the second to the major triad shapes. That's always a good option. I might throw in some scale stuff as well I would certainly throw in some bending and some guitar technique -y stuff but for this demonstration I just want to keep things simple and it's just going to be purely triad based melodic improvising.
go and I'm going to play through one more time and this time I'm going to play single notes in a more melodic kind of a way. And you want to try and think melodically here and find those smooth connections between the notes in each of these triads. You don't have to play a lot of notes, you don't have to play all of the notes in each triad every time the chord comes round, but try and find some nice phrases, some nice melodies. And think about those smooth connections that I touched on earlier. So things like the, the third of the one going to the root of the four chord and bring that out in the melody. So you know, likewise going from the, uh, the four chord to the five chord. So just going down one fret from the fifth of the four to the third of the five chord. So you can really hear the chord changes going by even without the accompaniment. And that's you know, the purest definition of chord tone soloing is that you're using these chord tones and you can really hear the chords um, even out of any kind of band context. Experiment, see what happens. I'm just going to have a playthrough with the backing track. That's a pair of quite challenging exercises, I think, so definitely take your time with it. Feel free to simplify slightly as well. You might want to spend quite a bit of time just working with one area of the neck, one string set, really getting to know those shapes before moving on to the next one. For demonstration purposes, just then I whizzed through all of the possible shapes, but that might not be the best way to approach this exercise when you're actually practicing. Let me talk you through the gear that I'm using today. Guitar is my Fender Telecaster, a 52 reissue. And amp-wise, there have been some interesting developments because last week I went out and bought one of these. So in a sense, I've gone over to the dark side by buying this. Uh, as I'm sure many of you know, this is a Kemper profiling amp. And essentially, I suppose it samples the characteristics of real world amps and digitizes them and it's a nice kind of convenient box that makes it very easy to get usable high quality guitar sounds and uh, i picked it up it's used i mean actually quite old technology these things have been around for years but um, i found this for a good price and thought i'd give it a go uh, the main reason for that being just practical workflow reasons when i'm making these youtube videos now up to this point i would say 99 percent of the sounds you hear in my videos are real amps 
in this room often turned up quite loud and mic'd up and then recorded into my computer and that's not really going to change I'm still going to keep on doing that just because I don't think that can really be beaten but I don't want to be too much of a, a tube or valve amp purist or a valve amp bore essentially I think that's not a particularly good place to come from uh, you know being dogmatic about this stuff really with sound it's all about what works and first impressions with the, the Kemper is it does sound really good and it will certainly make things a little bit easier when I'm recording these videos. Um, you know, in the past I've run into problems with the volume of the amps and you can probably hear that hum and buzz in the background of some of my videos and often I have to go through the entire video and mix the audio very carefully so I have to stop the amp sound getting into the vocal mic so I mute that when I'm playing and then have to remember to unmute it. It's all a little bit of a convoluted workflow so I hope in certain videos this thing is going to make things a bit easier. And it's early days so far I've only started experimenting with it very recently and it came loaded with about 500 or so profiles so I'm just using some of those stock profiles at the moment. Some of them sound really good to me, some of them not so good and at some point I might experiment with some of the profiles that you can buy or I might even try profiling some of my own amps but um, as I say it's not going to replace the real amps in my videos it's just going to be an option that I might occasionally use. So that's about it for this video hope you found it interesting and helpful. Over on my Patreon page there are going to be some supporting materials so I'm going to tab out some of this stuff I might do some chord diagrams and the backing track is also going to be up there. You can pay what you like and get access to all of that stuff. So check that out should you wish. Thanks a lot for watching. I shall see you next time.